Uh, that book up there is on Walter Cronkite. And I read his biography, Amazing Man, written by Brinkley. Uh, really amazing man. He, uh, during the Second World War, to fly in an airplane, you had to be able to work a machine gun. He could take one apart and put it back together blindfolded. But anyway, today what I want to talk to you about is driving. <clears throat> As you may or may not know, I am just turned my truck and I drove over the road um, coast to coast and border to border for seven and a half years. Um, and before that, I drove a tour bus in Washington, D.C. I had to drive the bus and I had to narrate. And of course, we did charters, taking school kids to old places like Hershey, Pennsylvania, um, King's Dominion, uh, Amish country, just anywhere they wanted to go. And what I want to share to you is, um, I just picked up a story. 43,000 people were killed on the highways <clears throat> last year in traffic accidents. And really, that's not necessary. It's avoidable. Accidents are preventable 99.9% .9 of the time. And so looking back on my life, uh, I can tell you I haven't had a, a speeding ticket. Uh, since about 1974, and I haven't had any moving violations for about 25 years. The last ticket I got was on Constitution Avenue, making no left-hand turn, trying to get the people to Smithsonian. Uh, but again, accidents are avoidable. The government, you know, they have very rigorous standings, standards, and it's with the premise that, you know, if you can do all these things that the government tells you to do, uh, you'll be a perfect driver, there'll be no accidents. Well, <clears throat> if you do most of the things they tell you, you'll be a much better driver. But the secret to driving is, was the accident preventable? Now, anybody can go from point A to point B if you uh, obey all the traffic rules. Uh, you won't get any tickets, but that don't mean that you won't be involved in accidents. You gotta uh, be mindful of these accidents before they even start to happen. And this is done many different ways we'll go into later on. Uh, we'll talk about the CDL license for just a second. Uh, for all you drivers out there, you paid a lot of money to get it. Commercial driver's license, which means you pay about twice as much, three times as much, a lot of schooling, for the same driver's license that a piece of paper the average person would have. But if you would like to take those letters and make them be a little more meaningful, let's try this. <clears throat> C, instead of being commercial, that's a commitment to drive 10 years or more without having to make no more than one panic stop. Panic stop, I'm talking about when you push on them brakes and all your team wheels are smoked. Are smoking and I've done it many times and uh, I learned that uh, from the Smith driving system along with your trailways uh, now let's take the D for driving let's change that and drive in a manner that would not allow other drivers or pedestrians to get you involved in an accident okay so much for that now let's go down to uh, a license L. Let's change that to uh, limitations. You need to understand the limitations of you personally. Do you get particularly tired in the mornings or maybe in the evenings or between 12 and 1 or between 4 and 6? You need to understand what your limitations are and don't let other people encourage you to go beyond what you're comfortable doing. And you need to understand the limitations of your vehicle. And just because you drive one vehicle really good don't mean that you're going to not have problems with a different type of vehicle. I'm going to go back a little bit and date myself. The very first thing I ever drove in Washington, D.C. was a, um, a motor scooter. Bought it from Sears Roebuck, $350. And uh, got out on here and I rode a bicycle. Why can't I ride that thing? And 
the very first night, um, came down the, alongside streetcar tracks, and a cab cut me off, and didn't understand my limitations. I hit the front wheel brake as I was on a streetcar track, and I went over the handlebars, and I limped to work the next day, um, you know, limping because I was got a uh, road burn, so about four or five just places in my body. I wasn't no permanent damage, and I got out of that one lucky. Another limitation is uh, a tractor trailer. I clipped the mailbox one time because I had my tantrums all the way back, and I didn't understand the limitations of what I was doing, and that was my fault. So um, I think if we were to look at transportation, it, it's pretty well the same whether you drive a motor scooter, a ride on skis, surfboard, scuba dive, fly an airplane. I am a pilot, licensed pilot. Uh, it's the same thing. You want to go from point A to point B, amass the energy to do so in a manner that will not get you hurt or hurt somebody else. So again, uh, when it comes to driving, oh, uh, well, driving, you have to want a good driver's record, a driver's license. Everybody would like to have one, but not many people want one. Like means that you hope that, you know, if you're speeding a little bit into the town, the police officer won't give you a ticket, or if he maybe a warning ticket. Want means that you're, you're going to uh, want it so bad that you're going to obey the traffic rules to the best of your ability. And if you do make a mistake... You're going to go to um, and get a ticket. You or your attorney is going to go to court because really the very best time to tell the judge that you have a good driving record, you guessed it, when you have a good driving record. It's mighty hard to wait until you get uh, seven points on your record. What are you going to tell the judge then? Well, the first police officer gave me a ticket was a rookie. Second police officer didn't know what he was doing. And the third police officer just did not like um, drivers. The judges just go look at you and say, well, you think the whole world is against you. So keep those uh, points off your record for a couple of reasons. It gives you a, a great opportunity to get a better job. Also, it keeps your insurance down. But accidents are preventable uh, as a driver, whether you drive a car or a, a truck. Uh, we all know we're supposed to check the mirrors. But checking the mirrors is not, uh, you're not supposed to be a, a um, a pendulum going back and forth, you're supposed to see what's in that mirror. Uh, for example, if you look in your left mirror, if you see two vehicles switching lanes back and forth, well, quickly you, you can identify the problem as uh, racing or perhaps road rage. Road rage comes uh, with many awful consequences, people throwing objects at each other, sometimes even shooting. But still, it's just a vehicle um, uh, just speeding, well, you can let off your cell rate a little bit and give him a little more room. If there's a car in front of you, off to your left, the left lane, give him more room in case he misjudges so he can uh, cut off in the right lane. Again, um, other things to do, uh, understand the weather conditions. and uh, You can't go too slow when you got snow and ice out there. Another good thing is if you see other vehicles off the road, well, there's no load that's that important that you can't pull off for a couple hours and then wait for the weather conditions to improve. So, um, again, I, my personal life, started out driving motor scooters. I was a ski instructor for many years, taught about 3,000 people in the beginning, techniques to ski, and no one ever got hurt in my class. I built my own scuba diving tank, and I was able to learn to avoid uh, dangerous vehicles. Uh, then, of course, drove cars, buses where I had an air rate, tractor trailers. I flew airplane about 80% of the way across the country. And it's all the same thing. You need to know what's in front of you, what's around you, and what's behind you when possible. Hope this will help you out and make it keep you safe on the highways because we don't need no more traffic deaths. I mean, 800 people a year dying per state is not acceptable. Thank you very much. Don't forget to go to CowboyRon.com for more news. And please subscribe to my YouTube station, Cowboy Ron. Having a happy trail. See you.